What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. This is a follow-up video to the last two all-row videos on the parts that I just recently installed. Uh, I've been driving on for a couple weeks now, so I want to go over a little bit of the installation and give my impressions of their performance. All right, I got the excess power bi-pipe and fluid damper installed already. Uh, to get these installed, you're going to have to put the car in service position so that's basically going to slide this whole front end forward to give you room to get to everything down there uh, the fluid damper is pretty straightforward uh, you just it's pretty easy to install too it comes with its own hardware uh, the only other thing you want to get for the bolts is some uh, blue loctite and that's about it uh, you know, of course, the usual, uh, take the serpentine belt off, take the pulley off, uh, put it to top dead center, and I'll line the marks up, uh, put the Loctite on the bolts and screw them back in, and that's it, put the belt back on. Uh, the bi-pipe, uh, it's a little bit more work because there's so much more attached to it. Uh, I'm running the uh, APR, uh, the APR intercooler kit, RS4 intercooler kit, so they don't fit exactly like the stock intercooler. So it took a, you know a little bit more to, to get them installed. Nothing hard at all, but you know it's not going to install just like exactly like stock. Uh, what I did was uh, you know of course I loosened everything, and what I did on on one of these one of the intercooler pipes is. I just took one pipe, uh, un unhooked both of them. I took one pipe and slid it in, and then I was able to slide it back in to the other side to get that in. And then once you do that, uh, you can line everything up with the bolts and the hardware that comes with uh, the XX Power Bi Pipe Kit. Uh, the only other issue I ran into was uh, this map sensor would not push all the way down. So I had to machine that out a little bit to get it to fit. And I've heard about other people having the same problem. Uh, this uh, map sensor is for the stage three. It's actually smaller than the uh, stock map sensor, uh, but it comes with a fitting, a billet fitting to make it fit like the stock one. So you could, just, if you're stage three, you could just take that out and it'll probably just slide all the way in. But it's not hard to, you know, there's a little step in there where it uh, comes in a little bit, you know, narrower. So you just machine that out with like a, a with like some type of rotary bit or something. It's pretty easy. So that was the only thing with that. Uh, the, uh, let me see here. You can see my diverter valves uh, before I had them facing the other way, but I didn't, I didn't uh, trim these back. I just wanted to get everything on, you know, drive it and everything. So I didn't trim these back. So the good thing is the engine covers will fit, but since I have them mounted this way, these, these are hitting the engine covers. So later, I'm gonna have to trim these back so I can flip them back sideways, then the engine covers will fit. Another issue I thought I was gonna run into was uh, the fan right here. I thought it was gonna hit the bi pipe because uh, I've heard about a lot of other people installing this one and the fan was hitting, but I think that must have been S4. The S4s have a different fan. I think it's a little bit thicker on there, so it rubs against that. Uh, so what I did was uh, I took some washers and put them behind the fan mounting bolts to space it out some. But actually, I, I put the fan on without the washers and it fit, it didn't rub or anything, but it was real close, so. I just went ahead and added two washers. You can see how much space I got right there. So I just added two washers behind the three bolts to space it out a little bit just for peace of mind. To get this fan off, uh, you can see right there, 
there's a special tool that they have to hold to hold the uh, the fan pulley in place while you have another tool to spin that off. It's a uh, it's, uh, counterclockwise thread instead of clockwise to tighten. So what you do, what I did was, uh, let me see if I can put this right here so I can show you. Oh, it's not gonna, not gonna hold. I'll just show you what I did. What I did was, uh, since I don't have the tool, I've never used the tool to get that fan off. I just take these pliers, some long handle pliers. I put it on there. You do it with the serpentine belt still on so there's tension on the pulley. And I just put this on there and you kind of give it a quick, you know, a quick turn. You have to do it probably a few times to get it to loosen. But it'll, it, it usually loosens for me, it always has. I just do it a few times until it does. But you just give it a quick turn to get it to loosen. And once you do that, you can just turn it by hand and you'll see it coming off and then of course putting it back on vice versa the same right, thing. as far as performance the hoskis sway bars do exactly what they say they're going to do you get more steering response and a lot less understeer the only negative thing i would say is the ride got bumpier mainly from the front on bad cars a lot of people usually only upgrade the rear sway bar to help combat understeer even more so i'll probably end up doing that later uh i could only find these with both bars uh, no one was only selling the rear bar so i just went ahead and installed both before i had installed the jxb performance drive shaft carrier support i was getting what felt like a wheel hop kind of felt like it was coming from the rear I had already upgraded the motor and transmission mounts and the uh, the rear differential mounts also and the snub mount also. So I'm guessing that carrier support was the weak link. Uh, like I said, when I would get on the freeway in the upper RPM ranges, when I would get on it hard, it felt like wheel hop. But after I put the uh, JXB support carrier in, uh, it went away went all the way away and it felt smoother too uh, when I get on it now it just feels a lot smoother and I, don't, I didn't notice any vibrations from it either, either. I know a lot of people were saying that uh, I think it might have been S4 cars that they were getting some uh, vibrations from it but I didn't sorry about that had some motorbikes going by uh, but yeah, it seemed to smooth out the drive line, so I guess that was the weak link. So basically that smoothed everything out and uh, the power delivery feels like. As far as the performance of the XX Power Bi-Pipe and the fluid damper, uh, the fluid damper, uh, like it says, it takes away those vibrations. So it did make the motor feel, I mean, a lot smoother especially on uh, power delivery, but through the whole RPM band, I mean, even at idle, the motor just feels a lot smoother. Uh, it's kind of hard to explain. The only way I can, can explain it is, uh, even on my stage three car, it kind of made it feel smooth like it came from the factory like that. That's the best way I can put it. I did this last because of the, you know how much they cost and I really didn't think it was going to make that much of a difference but man after I did it I wish I would have done it sooner because like I said uh, I did a lot of uh, road trips from Cali to Colorado in this car I mean it wasn't horrible or anything but it would have been a lot smoother had I done all this stuff before especially that uh, fluid damper uh, as far as the bi pipe uh I had already uh, installed the, uh, you know, like I said before, the RS4, the APR RS4 uh, intercoolers and the Monster Plenum Manifold. So the bottleneck was the stock bi-pipes. Uh, the XX Power bi-pipes are a larger diameter and they're smoother too. So it just gives that boosted air a larger, smoother path to travel into the manifold so 
I've noticed a uh, better uh, engine response and it felt like it might have added a little bit of like freed up power didn't add power freed up power so you know from the bottleneck so that was a good thing about that and the ease of install for these parts aside from having to put it in a service position also there's a guy who did a flow test comparison between this one and the APR bipipe and this one I'll flow the APR bipipe and the APR bipipe isn't even it's discontinued and when you do find them I mean the price is just way high so I just went with this one to find that test you could try googling uh, Audi 2.7T intercooler shootout or flow test uh, I have it bookmarked somewhere a long time ago uh, but you could probably find it by googling one of those he has some real good info on uh, some of the aftermarket performance parts and he actually tested them so he, and he put up uh, some comparison numbers of uh, a lot of uh, different performance parts for the Audi 2.7T so right, check that's that gonna be it for this video uh, give a like comment share subscribe all that good stuff uh, oh also be on the lookout uh, I found some some footage of when I swapped out my uh, hybrid turbos well swapped out the stock turbo for the hybrid but I did that without dropping the motor transmission subframe everything was still intact so I'm gonna be putting up a video about that so subscribe so you can catch that video uh, all right if I miss anything just Hit me up in the comments, get at me. Let's just start a discussion about the Audi 2.7T motor. I like hearing from you guys. Uh, thanks for all the likes and subscriptions. Thanks for all my subscribers sticking with me. Uh, just give a like uh, to help the channel out, I guess. Uh, help the channel grow and uh, keep content going for our bad cars. Uh, all right, that's it. I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.